Welcome back. There's some new reporting in the Washington Post about how parents trying to get the updated COVID vaccine for their children are facing a growing number of challenges in doing so. Distribution delays, shortages at pharmacies, supply chain issues, and financial obstacles confronting pediatric practices are all contributing to these challenge. As fall respiratory illness season takes shape and an expected winter increase in COVID cases loom, cases already going up. The Post points out that the federal government is no longer buying and distributing all vaccines, unleashing a host of complications. The new shots are recommended for everyone older than six months. Joining us now, founding director of Boston University's Center for Emerging Infectious Diseases Policy and Research, Dr. Nahid Badilia. Dr. Badilia, great to see you again. Um, though, num not for a good reason, unfortunately. COVID, vac COVID numbers going up. And let's be clear, this isn't the surge that we've seen other times, but they are still starting to skyrocket. And now we're having these reports about parents in particular struggling to get the updated COVID vaccine for their kids. And some surveys suggest that more than half of adult Americans have decided to not get a booster. So just lay it out for us. Should parents be getting boosters for their kids? Should grown-ups be getting uh, the booster shots for themselves? How worried are you about the winter ahead? Yeah, Jonathan, it's never a good thing, right, when you see me on TV. <laughs> it generally <laughs> means there's an infectious disease is about. Um, I, I think that everyone, what you've seen is that this year, compared to last year, even as the cases go up, we are seeing a population that's a lot more immunized. And so we're hoping that the same kind of deadliness that we've seen with prior surges, that we may not see that. But you know what happens? The flu and cold season brings about R RSV, influenza, and uh, COVID-19. And last year in 2022, we saw a triple demic, which actually overwhelmed the hospitals again. And to avoid that this year, you're exactly right. I think adult and child vaccinations. But I think the highest um, attention here should be for the 100 million high-risk Americans that are out there. Um, and October is the perfect timing for most people to get all three of these vaccinations. So who qualifies? COVID vaccine, everybody over six months, Flu vaccine, everybody over six months, and particularly those under 1,000, 100 million that I mentioned that are high risk for both COVID and influenza. And then for RSV, it's anyone over 60 pregnant people and people and kids over six months uh, or infants as well as high risk children. And the reason to get it now is what do we do every year, regardless of what's going to happen with this virus? Next three months, we're going to start gathering for Thanksgiving and then New Year's and Christmas. And we get it. What we know about this vaccine at least for COVID, is that the first four months, you have very good protection from both mild illness as well as infection. Even though the severe protection, disease protection continues, those four months, we're going to take it all now in October. We're going to be protected for the travel and the gatherings that are coming up. So let's go through some real-world advice for people watching. You mentioned October, a month just started. It's a good time to get the flu vaccine, the COVID vaccine, also the RSV shots if you can. So should people be getting them at the same time? And where would you recommend people get these vaccines? Because are, we are seeing shortages at places like pharmacies. Yeah, I, I think that shortages, at least for adult vaccinations, are improving. As you said, one of the issues has been that over the prior years, the government has you know, um, acquired these, distributed this, played a major role in ensuring that they're stocked everywhere. And this year, there's so many more actors that are involved in this process. And so you're, we're seeing the growing pains, which unfortunately, I think it's a reflection of what we need to improve in our healthcare system at baseline. Um, and so I, I, the best advice that I can give folks, well, what I'm hearing is that a lot of times people are showing up at pharmacies and finding out that either it's not available or that it's not covered by their insurance. And in those cases, many times, it's because they're in a place that is not in their network. So what should you do? I think the best advice is for you to probably call your uh, health insurance first, find out where the, the facilities are. They're gonna be in your network. And then once you make the appointment, just to ensure the day that you go in to call the pharmacy and say, hey, just want to make sure that you still have these vaccines in stock uh, before you go in. I, I think that allows you to not make those additional trips or to worry that something may not be covered. A real world and helpful advice there. And as cases continue to rise, I'm certain we'll be speaking to you again soon. And we are always happy to see you on television, even if some of the news is grim. Dr. Nahid Badilia, thank you again.